Big shit, it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nah, nah, you know my dad. Hey, man, we got a girl in here today, y'all. She don't need no introduction, man. This girl's a producer, badass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Check it, man. Eli back in the building one What's more game. What's, What's going up? on? What's up? What's going on? What the hell you been up to? Man, say I launched a nonprofit and I also launched a um artist collective. So I've actually been working on building the brands right now. So I've really been throwing and curating a lot of events. I had one at South by Southwest. I had one in Atlanta with my nonprofit. I just got back and did one in Dallas. So the event curation has been popping for me. That's Man. cool. Yeah. So that's something new you're trying to venture out into? Um, so not necessarily new. I had done some events with um, my business partner at the time, Dirt Beats. Shout out to Dirt Beats. Um, and so then I kind of just took it off. Shout and out to Dirt Beats. <laughs> nigga, you know I rock with you. You know he's in Miami doing uh, Unplugged tonight. Is he? Oh, Miami Unplugged. Wow. Tonight. Yeah. That's awesome. Unplugged yeah. is growing. It's growing. It wow. is. It is. I started going last year and then, um, yeah, it's just gotten bigger and bigger. So I didn't mean That's to cut awesome. y'all, but let's That's get right. back into it. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to him. So pretty much all the sauce that I learned in regards to like throwing events and stuff like that, I've learned from him. But um, I have like an open mic every Thursday. I have an every other Sunday event as well. And then um, with my. Where non- are you at? Royal Lane Studios. Shout okay. out to Royal Lane Studios. We have a new location in Dallas, Texas now mm-hmm. off Maple and Mockingbird. So that's every Thursday. I usually have anywhere from 50 to 70 artists come out and perform. Um, so it's it's pretty big. It's called the Underground. You know what I'm saying? That's so live. It's that's a little live. live, live underground event for artists. Um, and then I also, like I said, have the nonprofit called I Am That 2%, which is what the hat's from, mm-hmm. which is for females in the industry as well as models. So I recently had um, a fashion show, but it's merged with like a female artist showcase. Um, and I had a lot of models from uh, J3 Productions and stuff like that come and model there and um, artists perform as well. I had Mac Benji perform and stuff like that. She's like a local rapper that's fire as well, so. That's dope. Wow, that's, yeah. that's wild. So um, knowing all the things you know about production and music industry, being a female in this industry right now, um, if you could go back and change what you're doing, change the avenue, would you change it? Or would you stick with what Like would doing? I change that I'm a music producer? Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't change it. You know, like I, I, I've mentioned before, I've played piano since I was three years old. So it's always really been a part of me. Um, I will say that working with a lot of males in the industry can be hard to navigate. That's, I've yeah, had some experiences that's like they're, um, I'm not going to name no names though. That's fine. But like one of my experiences that I had, um, a guy was in town and, uh, he was on love and hip hop, but mm-hmm. he's from, uh, here in the DFW area, but he was okay. on Love and Hip Hop like a okay. previous season. And you know, like during the session, he like turned my chair around and like spread my legs and was no. like, so talk to me and tell me what's up. Now I will say he was off on like the pills and the alcohol and stuff mm. like that, but it was early in the morning, you know what, what I'm did saying? You do? And I was like, no, like I'm good. Like let's keep it business, you know what I'm saying? He went, he tried to do a few other things and um, you know, he got back on track and then uh, re- I did record a few tracks like for him, but he was so off, like not sober but did that, that throw you did good. that throw you off mentally because you have to be able to be in a frame of mind to produce and to do your to do good work yeah it did so, and and like he never dropped anything that we recorded that day and i don't blame him because it, 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 it he was not sober so like it didn't sound good so but and it was cool that i got to work with him but sometimes it is kind of like frustrating because as a female um a lot of times people with more clout think that every female is just gonna throw themselves Mm -hmm. at them and even though I am single and even though I'm not seeing nobody it doesn't mean I want to be with you or I want to just have this one time you know I'm saying experience with you if I do I'm gonna let you know but if I'm there (laughs) for business you know what I'm saying like Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it professional because you know I feel like a lot of times as a female we get looked over because um a lot of us have been too accessible to men and so um it causes I feel like a general thought process like well she's a girl so she's cute she makes beats like I can probably get both from her you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, but but don't you think it, 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 it's a two way street? Let me go on and be the devil's advocate. Let's go. On Let's, I want to hear I, it. Let's I feel go. Like, you know, like <laughs> a lot of times women do throw themselves on them, and it they causes do. the other women to start getting looked upon that way as well. So it's a which is what I'm saying. I feel it's like, like it's like on your way. head. It's a two way deal. <laughs> it's my brand two percent. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand that perspective.
perspective and I agree that I, that's what I'm saying like I feel like a lot of women have made themselves successful so for the ones of us that are trying to keep a professional um, men especially in certain realms you know what I'm saying like of uh, levels in the industry and things like that they do think that every woman's gonna want to experience you know something right. sexually with them and in and, and that regard like not every woman does but then they get in their feelings when they get you know kind of like rejected <laughs> well you should you should with your brand 2%, you should keep a shirt that says keep it professional and wear that to every session. I have a shirt that mm -hmm. says clap beats, not cheeks. Okay. Actually, that's a tagline of from my brand, um, but that's cute too. I like that. I have to try that. I have to try that for sure. For sure. Yeah, because then they'll know already when they see it, like, oh, she wants Yeah, that. like okay. if you want to go out on a date with me, like, let's get through the session and then ask me out or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so you like to be courted. You don't want to just, hey, here, here yeah. it is. <laughs> not during the session or anything okay. like that. Yeah, no. Okay. So, so, um, how many females are in the career that you're in? So it's only 2%. Um, so in a room of 100 people, only two are women and 98 are men, um, as far as like producers go. And who, you, who, in your opinion, is the top-notch female producer in your field? Okay, so for me personally, I'm going to go with someone from Texas that because I, I love my state and things like that. So shout out to Linnell Grant. Um, she produces for Toby Newigway out of Houston, um, which him and his people were on mm. BET Awards and stuff like that. But she's produced pretty much all of his tracks like from the beginning when he first like started everything. I need so her on she, my show. You do. <laughs> you do. That is like my top vote for your show. <laughs> so she's a wife. You know, she has a successful um, marriage. She, um, you know, at least from what I see. And um yeah, because you her know social husband, media nowadays, yeah, you, know, you can't no, no. never tell. But she seems happy. She, her husband's in real estate out in Houston, and um, she has children as well. So she's a wife, mom, and she does that. Wow. And she, you know, so I really appreciate like all those aspects because I feel like a lot of times um, in, a, in in striving to keep it professional as a woman, we can turn kind of masculine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? To kind of like ward off the mm -hmm. other masculine energy. And that's something that I myself am working at personally as well um, is trying to find my like balance of femininity, but professionalism. Yeah, because you, you know, feel like, like if that. you show your femininity, they're going to, you know, try. Right. right. So seeing her be a wife and a mom mm -hmm. and a producer is really inspiring for sure. Yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, you know, when it comes down to the in entertainment field, man, you know, First of all, it ain't just the entertainment field. Let me break it all the way down to y'all. It's period. Uh, on site, if you looking good to a man and he see you, you even the dogs do this. It's a dog. <laughs> even the dogs and the cats do this. <laughs> even the squirrels do this. He, uh, na natural, Naturally, a man is attracted to a woman and a woman is attracted to men. A lot of times, you have to have a, 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 a attraction mechanism to calm that down. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're not getting away from that. What happens is, a lot of times, we'll think it so much and have to deal with it to where we make it a bigger issue. And because it is an issue, but every time you become something where you don't trust no more because mm -hmm. everybody coming at you with this, and you're like, damn, man, I'll get sick of it. But you have to, you have to be prayed up. I'm no, say for that. sure. You have to put God first. <clears throat> you have to have something to balance you off when it comes to spiritualism. Mm -hmm. And that, a lot of times, can help be your guide. Most definitely. And I ain't going to do this. Y'all need to pay me. Nigga. <laughs> you know, Give us some knowledge out here. <laughs> no, that's for real. That's facts. I mean, like, just like my open mic last night, you know, I had 50 artists perform. And out of those 50 artists, only five were female. So you have to understand, like, I had to interact with 45 men last night. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Artists, up and coming artists. So, like, learning to interact with them and have, like, those boundaries and things like that. Because, you know, obviously, out of 45 men, somebody going to try something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's just how it is. So Are they drinking? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think yeah, gonna happen? exactly so it's just like learning how to navigate through that i think as a female um and i'm in charge you know of the event so it's like i have to talk to them so just being able to like navigate through like situations like that is something that i've been working on for sure well, that's a good thing uh what, what else we got what, what are we talking about so you have anything <laughs> else new coming up um so i will be having for? um another fashion event and female artist showcase with my nonprofit in the new year uh here in dallas and then i will be probably having one in um chicago uh mm. in like the mid middle of the year i'm working on the venue for that so that's like my next so spot. what date for the one here in dallas it will be february uh i, I don't know if it's the 19th but it's like that weekend okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um where is that gonna be 
Um, it's probably either going to be at Royal Lane Studios again, which is where the one re most recently mm -hmm. was, but we'll set it up differently or at the new Creators Don't Die building. However, the previous ones that I had had in Dallas were at the old Creators Don't Die, but it recently moved. Um, they moved locations. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how the setup for a fashion event would work there, but I'm going to go check it out. And, and what are you going to be doing? Because, you know, every time we throw an event, we try to do better than the last mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what are you doing for this new upcoming event that you never did for the past so so this will be my seventh one mm -hmm. um that i've thrown with my nonprofit. so for this one the last one um i really feel like the media let me down okay um and i it's partially like my fault because first of all i didn't have the media like sign the releases and things like that because i've never had an issue before with my models not receiving their photos and stuff like that <clears throat> but i had media releasing photos without sending it to like the designers and the models mm -hmm. and stuff like that so then these parent companies that you know uh, manage Saying these models are like what's going on yeah. like you know like we can sue you for this so like all that's gonna be not even an issue this wow. next time yeah because i i'm on top of it <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, man, I, I definitely, like I said, when I think about, you know, Eli, man, just to be a, a go-getter, one who don't quit, who keeps going. I, when we met her, she was in the mist. She was in the, the mix, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, making sure you can stay relevant, navigate through the times, and make sure that your brands pop, because in this day and time, you have to stay in the public eye, you, it is so accessible on these things right here. Yeah, you gotta create an image for people to tap into. Even um, you control what or how much they can see of your personal life, but that image is definitely something that is really important. I had someone that has a dis distrib distrib distributes through Empire, actually, I met with him today, and he had found my Instagram like months ago and had popped up to one of my events and has like this whole business plan idea um, with his businesses and stuff like that. So it's just like, that's a prime example, like people and investors and things like that do look at what you're doing based off of your That's social true. media for That's sure. Yeah. I see that tattoo on your arm. What does, I've been trying to f read it. I'm like, okay, this I is, can't this read This is it. highly favored. I was shot last year three times um, mm. at an event in Dallas and um, I got this tattoo afterwards because I had a blood clot um, and I shouldn't have made it because of the blood clot, but I did, so I'm highly favored. What language is that? Huh? I was at Prime Bar. What language is that? That's not Hebrew. English. Uh, Hebrew, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. What would you hear that? I was hitting my groin and um, both of my legs. I was sh uh, shot like a cross, but um, I was in Parkland for a while and I was on blood thinner for like over half of a year trying to get rid of the blood clot. And I still have some heart issues, um, but the murder caused heart problems. Uh huh. And a girl was actually killed that night. So the murder trial is actually in December and I'm testifying. Ooh, wow. So did you see the person? Mm -mm. You didn't. So what do you have to testify? I know that's about? what I asked like, too, because I was like, like the district attorney or whatever, or like for Dallas was talking to me about that. And I was like, I didn't see anything. Like I literally heard the shooting and got shot and ran into the men's bathroom you know what I'm saying but I think it has to do with like the um the like basically the security that night was unlicensed and things like that so I think they're trying to figure out like where the fault really lies so you were so okay so you were shot in your legs but you ran yeah yeah, I looked down and I was like so bleeding you saw out, and, everything. You <laughs> and I running. just started running. And I went into the men's bathroom wow. and I was like Adrenaline. grabbing, grabbing paper towels, and I was like, "Help me, help me!" And all these guys were just staring at me. Like one guy had asked for me for my number, and I didn't give it to him, and he was literally just staring at me. And I was like, "Yeah, he thinks I'm probably about to die." I was like, "That girl didn't give me her number. Forget her." Like, wow. <laughs> I'm so serious. Nobody helped you. Nobody helped me. So like, I passed out. The only person that helped me was one of the unlicensed security guards. Um, uh, Smokey and Smokey LaFleur is his name he actually just recent had just recently got out of jail come to find out but he had found me passed out and shook me and I guess realized I was still alive because I had so much blood like around me and he ran and grabbed bar towels and came and held pressure till the paramedics got there he um, saved your life. and he said yeah he saved my life because everyone thought I had died because I was just laying in this Mm. Puddle of blood. blood. And yeah. that's so crazy that bystanders, people that sit down there and just watch you. And, and I was yelling, like, like, somebody help me. <laughs> like, I was crying. Like, because I knew, because the one on my left leg was like, um, nicked my femoral artery. So it was bleeding like a lot. So, like, I know I needed help. Man, I, I, I look at things like that and I know that you're basically, you went through that for a reason. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. So, somebody else going to be able to hear your story and know, hey, man, you know, um, I can change or. 
I got shot and I don't think I can make it and you still pushing. So that's heavy. And you're able to walk and you, you know. They told me I wouldn't be able to walk again. Right, that's and, what I was about um, to think. And so uh, I couldn't feel my whole left leg for like a month, like at all. Like it was just numb. I didn't, and I was scared. You know what I'm saying? But I was, uh, I was by myself. I didn't really have. I don't have no family out here and stuff like that. And um, I have a two story house. Where is your family? Um, they live. They live. I was adopted as a child, and so she my my right, my ties that. with them are not are not strong. Okay, because I was about to. Because I remember all of that and how you left and all of that. But I would think that if the child that I raised um, got shot, that I would rush they to the hospital. They didn't call me back. They texted me and said they were glad I had tattoos. So when I do die, that they'll be able to identify my body. Wow. This your adopted they parents? They did not tell you that. What the hell? You adop- Why they adopt you then? I don't know. I think that I disappointed what their desires right. were for me. You know, as yeah, well, they, they, they So they, you haven't they, seen them since? I have seen them a few times because I am, you know, I, I don't want to live my life with any grudges and things like that. So I am doing everything that I can to, you know, Savage. work out some things um, with them because, you know, they do have played, they did play a key part in my life. So um, that's a work in progress. Is key. Yeah, definitely a work yeah. in progress. Wow, man, your story is incredible every <laughs> yeah. time we hear it. You, you, you're a blessing, a blessing to be here, man, a, a vessel, man. And um, thank you so much for coming back mm. on Boss Talk. Most definitely. Man. Thank y'all so man. much. Man. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> no, nah, we're going to try to keep you, keep everything going and flowing, man. For thank sure. you. And keep on doing that great work, producing and making things yes. happen. Where I shout, out, shout out to Young Deji. He's with Taylor Gang. I have a track, Afrobeat track, I produce with my friend Ugo and Q Swift. Um, that's dropping soon. Awesome. Okay. That's called it. Fiona. Okay, that's so him. you like Young Deji? He was Khalifa's artist. Tap in, it's man! Wow. See how she said, "Wiz I'm Khalifa artist." Yeah, tap in. Yeah, <laughs> Just in she, case if you don't know who he is, yeah, go <laughs> Taylor <tap> Gang. <laughs> yeah, real talk. She said Taylor Gang. Y'all remember? <laughs> Stop playing, man. So yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate you. We love you. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. It's been another great segment. Yeah. A boss talk one on one. What Let's a boss is talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs>